it's so like there's no like bells and whistles or anything I see mittens. Ah, oh, there we are. I see mittens. <sighs> Hi, guys. Oh, wow. You can see my chair and everything over there. Let me just look at Oh, you can see both at the same time. Interesting. Hmm. God, I can't get this camera right. Okay, let me pump this out. There we go. Oh, my mess. Hi, you guys. How's it going? You guys staying out of trouble? Hello, everybody. <laughs> <coughs> Lisa and Carrie, who's uh, my little main cottage studio? Um, we could just call you Maine. And Lisbeth and Laurel and Annabelle Lee, Dodie. Oh, you did, Lisa? Was that you? I heard a ding ding. And Linda and Nikita. How's it going, you guys? How's journey? <laughs> Journey's good. Journey's decided that he wants to be touching me at every waking moment and even every sleeping moment. It's it's kind of funny. I think that Journey is, um, if not, I don't know if he's purebred or not, but I think he's got some ragdoll in him because of just the way he behaves. Ragdoll cats are typically like, just like that, like a ragdoll. Like they, you know, when you pick them up, they just kind of go limp and like, you know, you could, they make great lap cats because you can just, you know, hold them and they don't care. You know, they're super laid back, mellow cats. And that's exactly how he is. Jer uh, Jimmy's not like that. Jimmy doesn't like to be held at all. Not at all. You know. And neither does Grasshopper. But Grasshopper. My hands are completely. Can you guys see? My hands are destroyed from Grasshopper. He's pretty funny. He'll, if I'm petting. Like under his you know, between his front legs or scratching his tummy or something, all of a sudden he'll just grab my hand and like bite me. And then if I try to pull my hand away, he'll, he'll grab harder and then bite harder. It's super funny. And, and then he just like looks at me with the tip of his tail switching, you know? And I mean, he's not trying to hurt me, but he's trying to like possess my hand, you know? pretty funny. Your son has a rag doll. They're, they're sweet cats, but I looked at pictures of rag doll cats and, um, he doesn't really look like a rag doll, but he acts like one. It's really not painful actually, Carrie. It's just like, I just, I just can't move my hand. Like I just have to let him have my hand until, until he's done possessing it. It's really funny. He's playing, but that's what cats do with each other, you know? So I feel like he's kind of, I don't know. Anyway, so say hello, Carla. <laughs> hello, Carla. <laughs> Body. No, not much blood, Carrie. I mean, very little. You can see I just have like scratches on me, but anyway. Oh, taking oh, taking your son back to college before before Christmas. Right on. It was sad when all my kids were gone and Sammy was the last one to go away away. Actually, Sebastian kind of was, but 
anyway, so someone said, oh, the LaFrance Journal from Jessica today, setting it up for a trip next door. Oh, next year, next door. <laughs> setting it up for a trip next year. Right on. You took your sin back yesterday. <laughs> oh. So I need some, um, I need some, uh, moderators. Um, does anybody want to volunteer to mod for me just in case we get any trolls or stalkers or anything like that? None of my, none of my old school mods are here, so. It just means that if you see somebody in the chat that is, you know, saying weird stuff or whatever, you can block them and kick them out. Um, and also, um, a moderator will usually like try to answer questions if I don't see the question or, um, like add links to the chat. Uh, a moderator is able to add a link. So like you could add a link, you know, to, Carla's shop or my shop or whatever, or other websites too that I might mention or Carla might mention. Um, okay, Lisa, you can mod for me. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Appreciate that. <clears throat> I'm terrible about looking at the chat. If I'm doing something, I'm not really good at looking at the chat <laughs> and working on something. I try. Oh, okay, Jessica, we'll be safe. You guys be safe on the road. Jessica's leaving. Oh. I burned my arm the other night making popcorn. I burned my arm on the bottom of the pan. So I've got a big group of Band-Aids on. I didn't have any big Band-Aids. So. <laughs> that hurts, man, burning your it was. It's bad. It actually, like, kind of hurts. I mean, it was like four or five days ago. I've just been putting antibiotic ointment on it and trying to keep it covered. But anyway. burning yourself hurts worse than anything, I believe. I burned myself really, really bad when I was in like grade school. I think I was about 11. I was making Easter eggs and um, we lived in the country and we had a wood cook stove. So I don't know if water boils hotter on a wood cook stove or not, but I'm telling you, it was really hot. <laughs> um, I took the I took the um, pot off the stove to put it over onto the counter, you know, and then it was going to go to the sink to get cooled down. Well, when I set it on the on the countertop, it like tipped. And it spilled all over me, like all over my right hip and my leg and my private area. And like, yeah, it was really bad. <laughs> it was really bad. I don't know what degree burns they were. I don't remember, but I, I know that I had blisters that were about that big, like hmm. just like hanging like Ziploc bags full of water on my leg. You know, it was, it was bad. Yeah, burns just keep hurting. Like they don't, it's like they don't stop hurting until it starts to heal. It's really weird. Anyway, so how was your guys' Thanksgiving? Mine was good. I had my whole crowd here. Uh, all the grandkids. All, five, uh, all the big kids. All the kids. Yeah. Yeah. We had, um, we had way too much food. <laughs> my, uh, oh, my mom God. and I just, yeah. we just kind of pretended like it was just another day, you know? Yeah. All my kids were doing stuff with their other families. So. <clears throat> well, we won't all be together for Christmas. Most likely. So we we managed to managed to make it work again this year for Thanksgiving like we did last year. <clears throat> but we won't all be able to be together at Christmas. 
time. Well, I had a brief conversation um, this morning. I had to go to the store and I wound up kind of talking to the kid that was working there. Kid, he was probably in his 30s, but um, he was asking me what my plans were for Christmas. And, you know, if I was looking forward to Christmas, I said, you know, I mean, I am for some reason this year, I have a little bit of like Christmas spirit, you know, but I just raising five kids and raising them in a relatively impoverished state, like we never really had any money, you know, was always kind of a, it was always kind of a burden. You know? Like <clears throat> holidays were always kind of burdensome to me. And so it just kind of burned me out on, on holidays, you know, like it was never like something I really looked forward to because there was always so much stress, you know, and then like all my kids' birthdays were kind of like right around Christmas, you know, I had one in December and then, you know, right through April, there was all of the birthdays. And so, you know, now I'm just kind of like, yeah. Oh, kind of relieved that I don't have to participate in Christmas if I don't want to, you know? So anyway, that's kind of how I feel about it. I, I kind of feel like every third year, like I like Christmas. Uh, and we didn't have a lot when my kids were little. And, um, yeah, I can relate. It was very stressful. Yeah. So anyway, this year I made a bunch of preserves and um, we went fishing over in Seattle and, and caught some salmon. And so we smoked that and I, and I canned the salmon with, with, uh, Conrad last, last weekend. So I've canned salmon for everybody. And, um, I made some extracts and I think I was, you know, talking about that last time we streamed, but so I kind of feel a little, you know, a little festive this year. And I wanted to make, I love um working with uh paint paint pens and markers and stuff like that i noticed carla's got her markers out um but i've been just watching all kinds of watercolor christmas cards and stuff like that videos on youtube and so i've just kind of been taking little bits from all these different ideas of you know watercolor christmas cards and sort of putting them together and you know, kind of doing my own thing, but I needed to make tags for all of those things that are going in my gift baskets. And then I also wanted to make, um, like a little booklet that can go in each one of the baskets to give people ideas of how to use the things that are in the basket, you know, like, Oh, thanks for this extract. Now, what do I do with it? You know, like, so, you know, anyway, um, right what, what? Great idea. Well, you know, it's like I made um I made this really good um vanilla melon compote, you know, and and preserved it. And I'm sure my kids are gonna be like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, oh thanks, mom, you know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'll probably wind up giving it to my neighbors. They might appreciate it. <laughs> anyway. Yes, I have five boys, Carrie. I have five grown boys. <clears throat> and they're none of them are in prison. None of them are in rehab. And uh they're all they're all doing pretty well. <laughs> so I call that a win. It is. Especially these days. There's so much they can get into. I wasn't so sure about my two there for a little bit. But. Yeah. I mean, they, my kids have all kind of gone through phases of, you mm -hmm. know, sort of experimenting or whatever. And, um, but yeah. thankfully I think they, they learned a lot from what I went through with their dad. <laughs> so anyway, so what are you working on Carla? I see some mittens. <laughs> so, um, you know, I've worked with the grandkids some, um, and then a friend of mine, we usually try to get together once a year um, for an afternoon and do some Christmas cards. And I just, um, I had a, I had a dish towel that had gingerbread 
chicken and canes and mittens and stuff like that on it. And so I drew some mittens that kind of I got the inspiration from that. So I drew out some mittens and then um, just colored them in in different in different colors, kind of some stripe designs and some polka dot designs. And um, then I kind of like, I kept drawing the mittens and then I thought, why do I keep doing this? I could just trace over. <laughs> <laughs> right. Why am I myself to keep getting the mitten right. So then I got smart and um, yeah, then I got smart and decided that I would use some tracing paper. So I made me some mittens on the tracing paper. So now I can just trace these onto I need to I need to go around them in pencil again, but um, I can just take this. So if you've got something, if you if you're if you're not good at drawing, you know, if you've got some clip art or something like that, you can take a piece of tracing paper and just trace around it. Now, when you trace this side, when you trace this way, when you flip it over, the image will be opposite. But since the mittens are you know, you won't be able to tell the difference. Like if you're doing a Christmas tree or something like that, you know, it's not going to really. But um, I just trace around the mittens and then trace it onto my little card. And yeah, I how do you get it onto the card? Hold on, I'm going to show you. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> hold on a minute. Okay. So okay. I'm just doing the shape. Can you see me? Yeah. Give me I bought a light box just for this purpose. Yeah. And that that's great. If you have one of those, I don't have one. And that that's awesome. You know, um, you can buy one for like 20 bucks on Amazon. <laughs> I guess I need to do that too. I'm, I'm just saying like, <laughs> but then you have to use paper that it works through, you know, like you can't trace yeah. You yeah. know, I can't copy onto like black paper or any paper that's too thick. Okay, so now, so now I have that image. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I just took my paper and tore it into four pieces. This is just like a regular mixed media paper. It's a it's an inexpensive mixed media paper. It's not anything fancy. Um, so now I'm going to flip this around. And I'm going to put it on the paper where I want it. And if you have, if you use a light box, you don't have to do this. You can just trace it one time onto your paper. Right, Jessica? But, yeah. you know, me, this is the way I learned to do this when I was in school. <laughs> many, many. Okay, so you turn it over and then you trace it again onto the paper that you want it on. Yeah. So this is the, you know, if you happen to have the, you know, tracing paper. Okay. Um, and then it just like transfers the graphite onto the paper. Yep. But like kind of light, right? Light. It won't be, yeah, it won't be super dark. Okay. I was always wondering like, how do you get it onto the, because I have like graphite paper too, you know, but you can't see through that onto the. Right. You know, and then sometimes it doesn't work. It's like kind of irritating. Yeah, and you have to stay on the lines, you know. See, so you get a light image. Oh, okay. And now you can just go back over it with like a fine liner or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. that's nifty. So there's a little trick if some of you didn't, if some of you were not aware of that. So I think tracing paper also releases the graphite a little it, bit easier than other types of paper too. Yeah, it does. And I mean, I'm just using, so I'm just using a regular pencil. If you are actually to use some graphite type pencils or charcoal type pencils, which can be very messy though, I, I would suggest more like a um, an art pencil, you know, graphite pencils that are a little bit softer, not a real, a hard graphite pencil or you know number two pencil but if you have art pencils some of them will work better 
Yeah, turn. see, I have this stuff. This, that, the super midnight, like, carbon paper stuff. Yeah, I mean, if you, yeah. But, but I don't trust it. It's like, it doesn't, I don't know. It seems like sometimes it doesn't actually transfer. And then I just get mad. And plus, okay. you can't really see exactly where it's, like, right. Stolen, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a little bit, but that would work. That would work really neat. Like, if you wanted to do like a background or something, Jessica, like you could take you could take that paper and just draw like squigglies or circles or something like that and put like those kind of images on and make you a background design sort of to go by and paint it. You know what I mean? Yeah, wanted to or ink it or whatever. Like if you're, you know, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Or like, I do. pretty much. <laughs> and go over this. Um. So I've been kind of obsessed with um. Uh. Um. Marta Maremi Smaller. I've been kind of obsessed with her. You know, night sky um christmas cards that she did i don't know if any of you guys know what i'm talking about but she did these beautiful um she's done the video a couple times now and just the way she does these night sky like paintings with um hold on i'm looking for something You'll see what I'm talking about. She, so she does them a little bit different. She does them without wetting the paper first. Um, but I kind of prefer to actually wet the paper. Whoops, let me grab my paint. Hold on. And I, for right now, I'm just using the Kuretake watercolors. But um, I like to wet the paper. in like a square or whatever shape you want to do kind of have to tip it in the white right so you can see if you miss the spot you know but you kind of want to like let it sit for a minute until the shine has sort of gone away so I like to do two, I like to have kind of like two or three going at the same time so I can let that water kind of relax a little bit into the paper. And then um, I'm using a brush that actually holds quite a bit of water. It's like a mop brush. Um, it gets kind of frustrating to do it to do this wetting of the paper with a brush that doesn't hold very much water. <clears throat> Try to make it as even as I can. Just do two for now. And then with another brush, a little bit smaller brush. This is the way Marta does this. She starts with like black at the top. So this one's kind of, the water has kind of soaked in a little bit and it looks real even across the surface. Um, so she'll just do black across the top and then add a little bit of water, just water your brush. And then she'll take a color like, I don't know, like purple or blue or some kind of night sky sort of color and then add that in and then just work your way down the paper. And if you wet the paper first, it gives you a nice little like gradient, you know? And one thing that I have learned and everybody says this, that does watercolor, but it always dries lighter than you think. So you really do kind of want to, 
apply the paint relatively heavy. Um, these Kurataki watercolors are pretty transparent, but um, if you apply them too thick, they almost look like gouache. So they can, they have a tendency to almost look like um, kind of opaque if they're too heavy. And this just makes it easy. Wetting the paper first just makes it a little easier to get like a, um, a smoother gradient. And if the paint runs or whatever, that's, that's fine. That's, that's kind of what you want anyway. So, and if you don't like how much black that is, you can sort of move the paint, move the color up into the black, just using your brush and a little bit more water. I might add a little bit more purple in here. Anyway, so you do that and I mean, when I was, the other day I started making some of these and I think I did like, I don't know, probably about, <laughs> probably about 30 of them and um, used some different paints. I don't think I used the Kuretake paint when I did these. Um, I used some of my like better watercolors, but um, you can see this is how they come out when they're dry. It's cool. Um, I also, uh, I like everything to be sparkly for Christmas. Everything has to have glitter or some kind of sparkle or iridescence or something like that. Um, this paper is, someone's asking me if I use a, a specific kind of paper. Um, that happens to be Arches paper, but I do have... I kind of just have like a whole mixture of different watercolor papers that I've cut down to size. Like some of these are hot press, uh, some are rough uh, cold press, and then some just regular cold press. Um, as far as brands, I've, I mean, any watercolor paper is going to work for making greeting cards. Like, you know, it doesn't, doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, I think I've got some Fabriano like studio paper in that stack. And then there's also some Canson XL watercolor paper, that kind of thing. So it doesn't, I don't really think it matters too much for, you know, for making greeting cards, but um, the type of paper that you use will affect the way the paint moves on the surface. So like a hot press paper is going to be really um, smooth. So um, the paint is going to flow more evenly. Like it's just going to kind of dance on the surface and just flow smooth. Um, a rougher type paper that has more texture, um, you're going to be able to see that texture more when the paint dries, you know? Um, anyway, so, but this iridescent medium, this Winsor Newton iridescent medium, I love it. Like a lot of times what I do is I just take like a couple drops of this and add it into my clean water. Um, if you get something like this where you've got dirty water here, medium dirty water here, and then clean water there. So um, when you're just adding water to your brush, you dip in here. So I'll add a few drops of this iridescent medium into my clean water and then whatever I'm painting will have a certain amount of um, like sparkliness to it. I don't know if you guys can see that on here, but it's definitely apparent in person in real life, in real life. Yeah. And then mount them onto, um, and then mount them onto uh, when they're finished onto a piece of cardstock and make it into a card like like that like i mounted this just straight onto the card or you can do i did some of them 
just onto a piece of, this isn't like a folded card. So this is just like a flat card that I'll put in the envelope. So this is some pretty heavy card stock. So yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys the background because that's kind of how I've been doing all of these, these little cards <clears throat> um, using that same kind of background. And then, you know, do some smaller ones. Um, and then I paint my little scenes on them and I'll show you my little scenes. <laughs> but anyway, so see this one's green. This one's got some purple in it. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, typical like sky colors. So the like the purple or you could even use, you know, like I said, teal green or whatever. Anyway, and then just splatter some white across the top um, for stars. Um, I think the easiest way to do it is with a toothbrush. So let me let these dry and we'll I'll show you what I'm doing for. I'll show you what I'm doing on some of these other ones for the stars. So what Marta does is she just waters down um, like white gouache, you know, watercolor paint. Um, and you can use that. It comes out really matte, though. And then the problem with using gouache is that um, if you paint over it again, you have the likelihood that it's going to pick up that paint. So like if you paint something over the gouache with watercolor, since the gouache is water soluble, it's going to move that paint. So I like to use ink instead of, um, instead of gouache. So I've been experimenting with different white inks and <laughs> got quite a number of them, but one of the best ones is the Dr. Martin's um, bleed proof white. It, it will stay where you put it and it won't bleed. And it's pretty good as far as not, um, not moving when you, when you wet it again. So, um, or you can just use like a regular drawing ink, like this Higgins uh, white ink, or you could even use white uh, acrylic paint or something. But anyway, <laughs> so your turn, Carla. I'm kind of, I'm just going to do this while, while the camera's running. I'm just going back a couple of these and trying to put some little highlights on them with some, I stamped Mary on here. I have, um, I have some stamps over here, and I believe, I don't know if you can get this particular stamp anymore, but um, it's an old Felicity Jane stamp. To, um, get her kits on then. But um, <clears throat> so that's where that came from. And I just went and stamped either green or the, um, the archival ink, which is red geranium and fern green, which are Christmas. So I did red some of um, the green um, I'm gonna go back and just put some highlights in here with the white what I'll do is I have some um gold that I bought color shine stuff in gold. I like the same thing you did to make it look a little more festive so I'll go back and like put like gold just some splatters on here and then my plan is to stitch this onto a card base. And sometimes I'll just do a card base. You know what I mean? Like not a, not an open card. Um, sometimes yeah. Like just a flat card, the flat card. Um, and you know, write a sentiment on the back, but on these two, if you'll notice it, it's really cool to the back side. <clears throat> Of these alcohol inks when they they bleed through this particular mixed media paper and look how cool that looks i've even been tempted to actually just go on the back side 
and use the back side of some of them. Oh, it does look cool how it, it looks almost like watercolor kind of. Yeah. And then neat. So really you could use either, you could use either side of these. Um, and since this does do that, you know, I'm going to back it on something else. So, um, but yeah, so these are just, these are just the base. They'll look, they'll look a little bit, um, won't look so flat when I, when I finish, but, um, and I messed up on this one. Like I, I, so I intended to do gray and red, which was not, this was not one of my favorite ones, but I'm going to use it. Um, and I messed up. So I ended up just coloring in that last stripe red and this, this white pen's not working so great. Um, yeah, I'm going to then we had the conversation about the pins last time we were on. Yeah. This one, this one works better. This unit. <clears throat> I was actually looking for those pens that you use and I couldn't find the brand, but <clears throat> I saw, I saw, <clears throat> I did see that there were quite a few sets of different um, alcohol markers on Amazon that weren't that expensive. Oh, no. you these? Huh? You couldn't find this Sanuki? Well, I or? couldn't remember what the brand was. So, but I didn't buy any, but I just was kind of looking for them. And yeah. then I was like, God, there's a lot. So maybe if you want to put the link to that particular set, it's if you can find it. What is it? Sanjoki. Sanjoki. Okay. That's the brand. And it was like a pretty, it's a pretty big set, right? I mean, there's like a hundred and some colors, right? It's 120 markers with a case <clears throat> and then um, comes with a little, comes with the um, labels that you can put on the pens. And then it comes with this little pad, uh, this little pad. This is some fair well, paper, but this is for the markers um but they're gonna bleed through the back and look i actually did the color chart hey hey oh nice no that's good because a lot of times the the color on the cap just does doesn't not look, no yeah. now i haven't put them in order in the case yet but i did actually do the color chart so let me put them um let me find them You run the risk of splatter on your. Uh... Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly right, Lisa. So sometimes, so some of them I've been doing the splatter, um, way more controlled, like actually dotting the snow in instead of um, instead of doing it like this. I did do a couple cards where I splattered after. So like this one, I actually splattered after I painted it. And you, cause you can see it like on the door and on the side of the building and over the trees and that kind of stuff. And I like that, but it is a little bit less controlled for sure. Um, I'm not sure if that's a church or <laughs> what that is, but I thought it was it was, this I took this kind of um, from a coloring book that I s tried to like sort of draw the building that I saw in the coloring book and it didn't come out exactly right, but it's whatever. <laughs> it's whatever it is. Okay, it's not, well, it didn't copy the link right, but that's what they are. So if, um, if Lisa, if you, can, if you can get that to link... I am having techno technological difficulties as usual. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I don't know why. It was just such a good deal. I mean, it was, did you say it was like 40 bucks or something? I don't know. It was, it was actually 45. It's gone up to 47.90. Uh, but well. still, um, still a super good deal. And, 
I even let my granddaughter, you can get the 80, you can get 80 of them for $33.90, or you can get the 120 count for $47.90. And the only thing, the only thing that you have to be careful of, because they are pretty juicy when you get them, is when you, um, when you open up the side that has the smaller nib on it, sometimes it'll just splatter just a little bit. So be careful when you're opening them the first time, like open them over something. Um else besides whatever you're working on <clears throat> and not all of them did that just a couple and even when i was watching because it was the frugal uh frugal crafter i was watching who enabled me to purchase them she was doing a review of them so yeah awesome. but it's um really cool the case is really nice and you can see it sets up um folds out and sits up here so you can see all your marks. And then if you're super smart and you do all this and then put them all in order, it's easier to find your colors. But for me, I, I did get this part done, but I hadn't, <laughs> I have not uh, organized the colors in number order yet. But. And I let my five-year-old granddaughter use them. I just had to be really careful. Um, you know, she, she loves to, She's really gotten into coloring and stuff like oh, that. Oh, I bet she loved that, huh? Yeah, she did. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, I've been struggling because the child has too many toys. She really does. So I've been struggling with what to get her for Christmas, so I think I'm going to get her a set. But we had a conversation about if I get them for her that you know, uses them. She's the only one using them, you know. Right. And, you know, with her mom around or whatever. Like, don't color the furniture and don't... <laughs> Wild cousin case and get hold of them because then the floors will be alcohol ink and everything else. So <laughs> <laughs> she's got, her little cousin is uh is something else. Anyway, he's uh he's just wide open. <sighs> but but anyway, so I think I'm gonna get her a set. Um yeah, get her a set for Christmas. And I may even get Peyton a We'll see. Um, so I did want, I just want to show you guys really quick. So just, just sort of, this has kind of evolved a little bit since I first started making these cards. I'll show you guys some of the other cards that I made. I think I might actually put some of them on Etsy because I've just made so many of them now. And I have like four people on my Christmas card list. So um, anyway, but I just took, a little sentiment, like a little Christmas sentiment and embossed it on the bottom. So just using embossing ink and black glittery, you know, embossing powder, um, just doing some little sen sentiment across the bottom. Um, this one I did in gold. It says happy holidays. You can't see it very well. This one was kind of a fail, but I kind of like it. The white, you know, you can just sort of make it out. Um, I really and then this one is just a holiday happiness to you. So I'm trying to leave space on the card for, you know, for artwork and, and just adding a really sort of um, subdued sort of uh, sentiment on the card, you know. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to show you guys that as an idea. And yeah, so some of them I'm not doing any splatter on at all. And I'm doing my um, my artwork and um, and a sentiment, and then adding the snow in later. So, yeah, there's something to do with that idea. And yeah, it's pretty pretty much endless the possibilities, right? So another thing that I did was I took a foam stamp. I made three by four cards. So I have this super like this is this is really old, y'all. <laughs> um, almost like a kid's foam stamp, and I used that green ink and stamped the Christmas tree. And then I have another little stamp that has a bunch of little ornaments. So I took different colors and did the ornaments. 
It's a really cute tree shape. So um, I may like draw in like a little line for, you know, the lights or whatever. I kind of like it just simple like that and maybe put, you know, Joy or Mary or down the bottom. I'll do some of that. Um, what is that stuff called? I need or something like that. I'm going to go get it. This is Remember. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> Hi, Tamar. <laughs> okay, Candace. <laughs> I will. I'll, I'll put you on my list. Cindy. I said Candace. I meant Cindy. I just... There it went. <laughs> is it, oops. Why do I always forget? Is it Cindy or Candace or Candy? Cindy. Candy. Candy. Oh my God. I used to have a friend named Candy. And I, so I always think it can't be Candy because I'm thinking of, you know, anyway. What can I say? Old. Anywho. So, that's that. Emboss or not emboss? To emboss or not to emboss? <clears throat> I've literally had these pens, you guys these um, Spectrum Noir um, brush pens. I've probably had these for at least six years. And I, I, they're still good. Like, I, it blew my mind that they still worked. You know what I mean? Um, and the same with these Wink Estellas. Like, I bought these at the same time. And the last time I was making a bunch of Christmas cards... And they're all still good, too. It, it's crazy. Um, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, anyway, I'm just saying, like, <clears throat> blew my mind. So what I like to do is I like to take, um, I'll do layers of, um, of color on, on my little trees. And sometimes I'll use metallic watercolor, but I've been using the markers because they're really fun. And I feel like I need to use these so that they don't go bad eventually, right? Anyway, so I'll just draw in a little tree trunk. And I, I like to draw the trunks in just a single line where I want them before I start actually making the tree shape. And so I kind of like trying to create something that has a little bit of um, composition to it, right? Like, um, and I usually will do five trees, either three or five or seven. Like an odd number is generally more pleasing to the eye. I think most of us know that. So, so I'll just draw a straight line and then just put my general kind of little, um, you guys can't see that very well, but you'll be able to see it here in a second. Just a pine tree shape. Like it doesn't have to be um, super realistic or anything. Even though I kind of think these do look a little bit realistic in a way. So where I've got two trees next to each other, I just let them overlap in the center. And then at some point I'm going to decide which one of these is actually in front of the other one. And I think it's going to be that larger one. So when I go to finish this off, I'm going to, I'm going to go over that smaller one with the branches of the larger one. That'll make sense in a minute too. So these ones aren't going to really overlap very much. So I'm using my darker color 
as my first color. Um, and then they're going to gradually get lighter because uh, I think that using that darker color first, it adds more depth to the, the actual look of the tree. Um, let me find, where's my green wink Stella? Here's this one. So those are both greens. And then I might even add like a layer of gold. And I'm just going over that same shape. Of course, this one is actually drying a little bit, maybe. <laughs> That's funny. I think I've actually used this one up. But I'm just going to get as much out of it as I can. These are pretty glittery. I don't know if, if any of you guys have these Wink of Stella uh, brush markers, but um, they're pretty pretty glittery. And I, now that I'm using them again, I'm like, I, I think I need more. Like, I need more Wink of Stella. But <clears throat> anyway, and then this is just a glitter um, Posca marker. So this is where you'll start to see the shape of the tree better. So I'll show you what I mean about overlapping these trees. So I really over, I, I overlap this larger one over the smaller one. So, so that just makes it obvious that it's in front of the smaller one. And hello, Tamar. I didn't see you. You said hello, Tamar. I did? Okay. I'm, I kept thinking I need to say hi to Tamar. And then I did. Okay. I said hello to her. I don't know if she heard me, but as I was coming back in the room. Yes, Wink of Stella comes in lots of colors, and so do the um, the uh, Spectrum Noir. Um, the Spectrum Noir brush pens. Uh, if anybody's looking for them, um, where did I see them? I think on Blick. I think Blick Art actually has like the full line of Spectrum Noir. Um, brush markers. <laughs> They're really fun. Um, okay, so then I've got that green. So I've got three layers, basically, of just different markers. Okay, can you guys see that okay? And then, so those have all been glittery type colors, okay? Now I'm going to use, this is, a, um, this is another paint marker, but it's opaque and it's not glittery. And I feel like this one is kind of important because it gives you a nice base for the snow layer. So I'll just take, take my opaque green marker. I've done so many of these now. I actually do need to replace some of these markers now, believe it or not. I never thought that would happen. Okay. So that's, that's after I've added the opaque green. And then for the white, um, I'm using the good old, where to go? Here it is. The signal. Um, and I keep shaking it because I think it's like a paint pen, but it's not. Um, <clears throat> the signal, Uniball signal. 
So you wanna let this dry, make sure this is dry. So how are spectrum noir markers different than others? Um, I honestly don't think that they're that much different, but they're, so one of the things that <clears throat> I think is kind of cool about them is in a way they're like refillable, but you know, I don't know if I would actually refill it. Um, but it just works like a, um, like a water brush. And it's the same for the Wink of Stella. They're basically the same type of thing. Um, they're not, they're not any different really, but, um, I don't know. I mean, they might be light fast. Uh, uh, I'm not really sure exactly what makes them special, but they're all metallic. They're all glittery. So, um, and then you can squeeze them to get like more paint to come through or ink or whatever. So, yeah, I don't really know, but Spectrum Noir Sparkle is what they're called. Anyway, so I like, I might, I need to make sure that this uh, paint is, is pretty dry. And then I'll just come in with a white gel pen to add the snow on the tree. It's a little more difficult to do this on the rough watercolor paper because it's so textured. Um, it's a little bit more difficult for the white gel pen to actually, um, you know, show up. But you can see the difference between the one with the snow on it and the other ones. It's, it's really pretty subtle. So this one I might actually come back and add some white ink to it because I don't really like how the gel pen is laying down. It's better on smooth watercolor paper, to be honest, the, the gel pen. I just like what it does with the, um, the way it kind of mixes with the paint pen. And it does the same thing with like watercolor too. It'll kind of like rehydrate the watercolor a little bit. And I just think it looks really natural in a way. Like I, I feel like it almost looks like real snow on the trees, but then you get that sparkly, paint kind of come through that you laid down in the beginning and it just makes it more dimensional too. I don't know. And I always do the white, like the snow a little heavier on the outside of the branches, like towards the tips of the branches and kind of arch it down, like kind of arcing it down because if you imagine how snow would actually be on a tree branch like it creates weight and it weighs the the branches down so anyway so that's how i kind of do my trees <laughs> yeah metallic or glitter they're glitter carry so but anyway so there's that and then i'm gonna do a little um i'll show you guys my little my little cabins that I did. Okay. So some of them I'm doing little snowmen, like little teeny tiny little snowmen. Um, and then, so this is kind of how my cabins like started out, right? Just really super basic and cartoony. And then they kind of evolved and got a little bit more, more, better. <laughs> um, hang on. I'm kind of dominating here for the moment. You're fine. Carla. You are um, fine. Doing my thing. <laughs> so then, they, then they kind of got a little bit more detailed. So I've got like a little cabin 
and a snowman, right? And then, you know, the trees, this one, they kind of come up on a little hill. And, you know, I, I mean, there's tons of people make, that are doing uh, uh, videos of, you know, cards like this. This one I just did in, in pink. It's like pink and teal for Christmas. So that was the other thing I wanted to make sure and mention to you guys. Like, you know, you don't have to use green for trees. Like, you can, you can do trees with pink or purple or orange or whatever like they don't have to be green so i like non-traditional colors for christmas too so but anyway i this is the only one i've done in pink but now that all my green markers are running out i feel like i'm probably going to do other colors so anyway let me show you i just want you guys to see so here's one where i didn't do like a snowman or anything and i think i'm just going to do a little sentiment um on the top or maybe not. Like, I might just leave this one the way it is. I don't know. Um, I really like these kind of longer cards. And then <laughs> it's kind of funny. See the little fence? You guys see the little fence in the background? Um, but I don't know. It's just fun. I did a little church. I like that. That is really cute. Here's a little church. And I like how the spatter kind of looks like shooting stars. You know. Um, this one really I did a really teeny tiny little cabin with a little teeny tiny snowman. You know, with lots of trees and lots of different. This one is done with um, metallic paint instead of marker. So... Anyway, Anna, that Santa, or is that a little house back there? Where what? In the back, that card you were just holding up. This no. one? No, uh, go back. This one? No, uh, the, the next one. I don't know. Not that one. No, I can tell that's a little house. That one. There's a little teeny tiny. Is that a teeny tiny little house back there? This one? Yeah, the one in your hand. Yeah. The one in your hand right now. This There's one? A, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it has a little snowman. <laughs> that is so cute. From, <laughs> from a distance, like if you can't see the, that it's a little house at first, I was like, is that Santa on his sleigh? <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he, even, he even has a little hat on. Yeah. That is so look. <laughs> Okay, now I now I can tell it's a house. You know, that's my eyeballs. Now I can tell it's a little house. Those are so cute, Jessica. They're really pretty. And then the smoke coming out of the chimney is just you know a another paint like a brush marker. So yeah. anyway, <laughs> they're super fun. Can you tell I'm totally addicted to making these? Yeah. And then. Like the even like the snowmen sort of started changing and becoming you know more detailed or whatever, but I mean let's you can just do little teeny tiny ones with just a snowman out in the woods, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was trying to think of other shapes to do like like bells or you know I don't know like christmas ornaments or whatever but i just keep coming back to trees and snowmen and little houses <laughs> right well that's, yeah, i got stuck on the mittens and then here yeah. gazillion mittens so, right um i don't know sometimes my brain just like i'm like okay it's going to be mittens this year you know or the little christmas trees and then i'll just make a ton of them like you're doing that you know so instead yeah. of uh, yeah. Well, I did do a little barn. I don't know if you guys saw the barn, but I think I want to do more barns. And I need to look at some more images of churches. Because I think the, the churches are really cute, too. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, a manger scene. But I just don't know about adding, like, human figures into them. Like, I don't know how well that will come across. So... Anyway, I'm going to practice, but I've been looking at coloring books for inspiration for images, you know, 
just because they're simple and like, especially like um, Johanna Basford coloring books. Her shapes are really simple, right? I mean, kind of, but if you go, if you look past all of the, you know, the busyness, you know, just the little shapes like the, the, the gingerbread man or like these little candy shapes. Um, they're just good for inspiration, you know? And then I thought to do just some Christmas presents, like that would be fun to just layer a bunch of Christmas presents on a card, you know? And those are easy to draw. Those are not hard to draw at all, okay. but it's nice to look in coloring books for inspiration. And, you know, like if you're not really great at doodling, you know, or coming up with your own little designs to put on things, like look at coloring books, because those people that make coloring books, they're great at doodling, you know, and just copy their little doodle designs. There's nobody that says you can't do that. Like there's no law against that, you know, so just saying, like if you have old Christmas cards or old you know, if you have, there's tons of Christmas coloring books out there in the world. So, you know, you can always use the design ideas from those. Or this Jessica, like this is a box I bought from Michael's to just store cards and stuff in. Uh-huh. See the little cute. Yeah. Thing? Like you could, you could just, you know, do your little peppermint hot cocoa. You could do the stockings the ornaments, you know, yeah, um, get ideas from things like this that are really cute. Um, and you could just trace those things. I mean, you know, this, um, yeah. I thought I would show just a couple of ideas and these are very, so this was like with that Christmas, tree, these were the cards I did last year. And talk about this. It's just, the tree and wishing you a very Merry Christmas. And I just stitched it onto a card stock card and stamped in the, on the inside. Oh, you stitched it on there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I have this one stamp sentiment, you know, for Christmas that I use. So, but so there's that. And then we painted me and Lori, you know, my friend that we get together, we just played around. This is watercolor paper. We were playing around with watercolors last year. And some of these came from, um, how do you say her name, Marami? Yeah, her name is Marta. Marta, okay. But it's yeah. called Art. But it's Marami Small Art, yeah. So Marta also does these real simple cutes, cutesy type cards too. She's got some that she did in the past. So Yeah, did, she has so many cute ideas for Christmas cards. So did some stockings last year with the little tree. So that's all watercolor. And then I stamped and did the same thing. I stitched it, you know, stitched it onto a card base. Um, these were just some I had left over. Um, here's a little gnome. <laughs> oh, I was thinking about doing a little gnome because I've seen some really cute designs, like just like that. But it's, they're really, know. yeah. And they're super easy. Mm -hmm. And then here's like a little. Reindeer, my reindeer sort of looks like a pig nose instead of a reindeer, but they're still. It does look a little bit like a pig. That's so <laughs> was, fun. Yeah. So did you could just make it a pig. I mean, yeah. why not? Yeah. So they're just really cute. I have several of those, but yeah. Um, yeah. Just other, just other ideas of things to do. If you made that with a circle, and then put the nose and ears and stuff on it. If you did that with just a circle around, it would uh, totally look like a pig. And you can sell those at Target. I'm not kidding. <laughs> a, a pig with antlers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally. Don't you guys think those would be cute if she actually made them like a pig? <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, why not? For a dog. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh. I used to do needle felted um, gnomes. I don't know if maybe some of you guys who've been with me for a long time remember I showed some of the needle felted gnomes that I made. And they're really cute. They're super easy to do too. And they're great for Christmas. Yeah, right, Carrie? I know. Christmas pig with antlers. <laughs> you know what? It always, my mom has a dog that, oh, and 
just so I just want to tell you guys a short little story about Larry, my mom's dog. Um, he, he, I feel kind of bad. He actually wound up getting in the garbage in my kitchen. So where I live is I live in a split level house with my mom. My mom has the upstairs and I have the downstairs. I know Lucy and Larry were their names. She had a brother and sister, two Cocker Spaniels. Anyway, so <laughs> But I put up this gate. I put up a gate that goes from floor to ceiling at the bottom of the stairs so that my cats can't go upstairs and her dog can't come downstairs into my house, right? So it's kind of like, it's almost like a duplex where we live. Anyway, but there's just a gate that separates us, you know, um, made out of like wood and stuff. Anyway, um, well, my son was here doing some work replacing a spigot on the front of the house and he forgot to shut the gate. And so Larry came into my kitchen and got into the garbage where I had recently cleaned out my deep fryer and dumped like the, I didn't put all of the oil in the garbage, but like the stuff at the bottom, you know, like that greasy flour that's at the bottom of anything when you deep fried something. Anyway, I scraped all of that into the garbage and apparently he got into that and he, I was upstairs visiting with my mom and Conrad came back downstairs and he saw that Larry had gotten in the trash. So he felt bad that he had left the gate open. So he cleaned it all up. Well, two days go by and all of a sudden Larry is like laying on the floor in the hallway in my mom's house. And he's like, doesn't want to move, doesn't want to eat, you know, doesn't want to, you know, no, not thirsty or anything like just like basically laying there dying, you know, anyway, so we wound up taking him to the vet and the vet said he had pancreatitis, like severe, acute pancreatitis. And I had totally forgotten about him getting into the garbage. Well, after the vet called and said, you know, this could be caused by him consuming a large amount of, you know, greasy food or something like that, you know, that's what could have caused this. But that's, what, and then I remembered that he had gotten in the garbage and what was in the trash. So I'm just saying, you guys, if any of you guys have dogs, like just, just watch them with that kind of stuff because it's really dangerous. Like, um, consuming especially pork fat is really really bad for dogs like a lot of people like to put bacon grease on their dog's food and stuff like that and it's old school i mean we used to do it when i was growing up but it's really bad for your dog and yeah and so he wound up in the hospital went on really heavy um uh, antibiotics and anti-nausea meds and painkillers, stuff like that. And he was in the hospital for about a day and a half and they got him through it and he was severely dehydrated too. So they put him on IV fluids and we had to like transfer him from the vet to the hospital that is here in town. And then, um, yeah, so they kept him overnight and he, and he's better, but, um, yeah, it's just a, it was just a hard lesson to, to, you know, kind of learn. But, um, I mean, not that you would encourage your dog to eat that kind of stuff, but, um, you know, I think people have a hard time saying no to their dogs when they're giving them like table scraps and things like that. And just know that like, you're not doing them any favors. So anyway, just my, just my lecture for the day, I guess. <laughs> but but yeah, chocolate, um, chocolate will kill them too. Small some dogs that. Oh yeah, chocolate, yeah. macadamia nuts, uh, grapes, onions. There's a lot of stuff. And there's also a lot of things that people don't realize that are dangerous for dogs and cats. Are um, certain types of incense can actually be poisonous to dogs and cats. And um, it, like diffusers, like scents that people use in diffusers, scented oils, those kinds of things can also be like really deadly to uh, peppermint is one of them. Yeah. If you want to know like what scents specifically, just Google it because it'll, it's kind of surprising. Like I know peppermint is one of them. Some plants, some plants too. 
Yeah, uh, Diefenbachia is one of the plants I know for sure is deadly to cats. Poinsettias are too. Oh, poinsettias, I didn't know that. That's good to know. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, but he's okay now. He's okay now. Yeah, peppermint is one of the scents that is really dangerous for cats. So this time of year, especially people are, you know. Yeah. <laughs> using diffusers with christmas smells and things like that so anyway yeah but larry's okay now he's back to his old self i'm glad okay yeah me too well you know my mom almost didn't want to take him to the vet and i was just like no he's going to the vet you know i mean why wouldn't you take him to the vet? Because she didn't, you know, she didn't want to spend the money. And it's like, okay, well, you know, if, if I had acute pancreatitis, would you not take me to the doctor? Like, I'm just saying. <laughs> and it was expensive. Like, it was like, she wound up putting out about $2,500. But, you know, anyway, he's, he's much better. And thankful. He's grateful to be alive. I'm sure. But you yeah. accidents happen. You know, you can't. Oh, for sure. And it yeah. was totally an accident. It's just, you know, I just thought I would share that with you guys. Just, yeah. you know, so that you would you, be aware. We're aware of, yeah. And you're right. There's um, people you used to put for their, for a dog's coat, you know, they used to say that you know, bacon grease and stuff like that was good for them. And I would think in, in moderation, but it's probably not, probably not a good thing to do that. But I yeah. can remember people saying that, um, you know, doing that was good for their coat, you know, their hair. Like if they're really had really dry skin. Um, right. I know people will do stuff like that. Like for mange, they used to put like motor oil on their dog if their dog had mange. And what's funny is that it actually works because mange is a mite and right. the motor oil actually does penetrate their skin and it kills the mites, you know? So a lot of times there's some truth to those things, but you know, that's not necessarily what we want to do in like 2022, right? Oh, right. <laughs> well, I would think, you know, the motor oil, you know, um, you know, uh, what, if that penetrates the skin, you know, um, yeah. And then causes cancer. Very careful about how much you did that in one application, maybe, you know, not over and over again. Um, but yeah. Oh yeah. And that's good to know about the Swiffer mop, mop too. She, um, can you saying that the Swiffer mop wet mops things, the cleaner in those is bad for dogs. I can't imagine. And I used to have a Chihuahua too, Carrie. And it, you're right. It doesn't take much for them to get dehydrated uh, at all. You have to be careful with those little dogs. Yeah. Yeah. One of them, my dog Momo, that some of you guys might remember, um, she mm. had a litter of puppies one time. And she actually had five puppies, which was a huge litter for a Chihuahua because she was only like six pounds. You know, she was tiny and I didn't even know this, but when she was nursing her puppies, um, her calcium level dropped really bad and she started having like tremors and like, like she looked like she was having like these major, uh, what do you call them? Um, like when people have a seizure. Uh, yeah. Like a seizure, but it was like her whole body was just like tense and tight and like, anyway, and it was just calcium like she from producing milk for her puppies. Poor That's little Momo. Crazy. I know Momo went through, Momo went through a lot in her life. Mm. Anyway, she's good now, but she's in a better place now. Um, I also had some other ideas that I wanted to share with you guys. Just, just kind of while we're here. Um, these little, 
<clears throat> I buy these craft stickers, craft paper stickers for my packages when I send when I send out, you know, journals and stuff. And um, I bought some different shaped ones. Like these ones are actually like I bought these to use on my labels for preserves. And um, I just wanted to show you guys. See, look, they look really cute. Where's the one I did? I can't find it now. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, here it is. So I did one with the little trees just on one of those stickers, you know, to, to use on a package. Like, isn't that cute? Isn't that a great idea? <laughs> yes, that's so cute. <laughs> Anyway, so I thought I would do some of those too. Some yeah. more of those. I've only done a couple. But, you know, you can buy these on Amazon. These these little craft, like, labels, you know. And then just use those on your, on your gifts, you know. Or on your preserve labels or whatever. That's a great idea. That's great to have. I need to get some of those. So I'm going to do my little my little um, cabin in the woods on this one. I added the gold to the cards. Oh, hold it up to the camera. I am. It's just there's a lag. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can y'all see it? Oh, super cute. Yeah, so then I'll I'll stitch it onto a base and I'll probably use um like red thread or something like that. Red or green thread on it. See, I was thinking about stitching these uh onto a base, but I kind of didn't think that that would look right. Like I thought it might look out of place for this, but for for that it's I think it's perfect. Yeah, I don't think yours needs anything. I don't think yours needs that extra thing. Um, I think really pretty. I think these are just very, these are just to me very basic. They need something to just jazz them up just a little bit. Um, but they're okay like they are too, you know? It's not, I mean, it's a handmade Christmas card. And most of the people that I send cards to, I mean, I don't have a huge list. I, I usually make them for my people. And, you know, family that I send them to and a couple of friends who really like the handmade. Like if I send them a Christmas card, they are happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple of friends that are like, I mean, they don't, they're not ugly to me about it. But um, one of my friends um, one year said, I really like your handmade cards. I said, well, I know. Well, I had to cheat because I just didn't have time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. For your handmade card. She said, I save them all. So when somebody tells me that, I'm going to make them a handmade card, you know? Yeah, so, for sure. Um, one year, I. Hello, Malia. One year, uh, when my son Conrad was um, just starting out as an independent insurance agent. Um, he wanted to send Christmas cards to all of his, uh, customers. And at the time, I think he had like 450 customers, like in his database, you know? And so I actually offered to make Christmas cards for all of his customers. <laughs> I remember. And, <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. Never again. <laughs> yeah, no, never again. Yeah, but I did. I made, I made literally, I think it was like 450 Christmas cards that year. And I just did them really simple though, you know, yeah. like I just took different colors of Christmas paper, like different, all different prints of Christmas papers, scrapbook papers, and cut them into like tree shapes, like super simple triangle shapes, and then just layered them on a card and stamped on it. Like, 
Yeah. You know, really super basic. But but even that, it was a handmade yeah. card. Oh, I think I used some, um, uh, what do you call it, dimensional like foam, you know, to have one of them kind of raised up a little bit. But like that was the most complicated thing I did. So it was fun though. He appreciated it. So I just take the, um, I used a paint pen, a brown paint pen, and just drew my little, my little cabin with the paint pen. I didn't do the roof because I'm going to do the roof with snow on it. And then I used a gel pen to just draw in the little door and the windows. And now I'm going to wait for that to dry. Like I want to make sure it's really dry. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of light in the windows with a yellow uh, paint, paint marker. So it looks like somebody's home. You can see this kind of makes a little bit of light in the, in the windows. And then I always do a red door. I just think a red door says welcome, right? And then there's just a little red door. Yeah, you're right, Linda. It was still 450 cards. Um, I bought the cards from, I think I bought them from um, Clearbags, clearbags.com. Um, and they were smaller cards, like, you know, just smaller ones like that, but in like a cream color, but he was so appreciative. He was really cute. Like every day he would come over after work and he'd pick up like 50 cards, you know, and then his wife, um, hand addressed them all and stuff like that. So it was really cute that he did that. So for my snow, I have been using gouache. And um, because I know I'm not going to paint over it, so I don't mind using gouache for that. And of course, I have to get the baby wipes involved because I use baby wipes for everything. Jessica, can you mute me? Move, can you move me for five minutes? <laughs> sure. Mute me for about five minutes. I need to take okay. a quick break. Okay. Okay, Carla's mute, you guys. <laughs> yeah, basically. He, he got all the credit, but that's okay. I didn't really care. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my chat. Hold on. Where is it? There it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was fine. I was just trying to support him because, you know, I didn't have nothing else to do. He's actually been doing pretty well. He, uh, isn't it great when your kids are successful? Okay, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you for modding for me. I appreciate it very, very much. You know I do, girl. So I kind of try to make the, I'm going to actually add a little bit more. <laughs> I try to make the gouache pretty thick, like, because I want it to be really opaque on the roof you know i don't want any of that um, because this is watercolor um the background is watercolor you know if it gets too wet 
that purple that's in the background is going to start bleeding through and I definitely don't want that. So I just do it pretty thick, pretty heavy. Let's go over my roof. I should be using a smaller brush. And then do a little bit down the other side of the roof. And then I like to make a little bit of snow just like right up along the front of the cabin. Like kind of up the corners of the cabin just a little bit. And just sort of down the little, down the little pathway. And then for the pathway, I just use like a brown or this is actually gold, but Looks welcome, welcoming. I think I'm going to do a little fence on here too, like a little fence back behind. Maybe I'll just do it with black. So like all the rungs of the, um, or the, you know, the boards of the fence don't necessarily have to be all connected. Like, you like it, even just like the indication of a fence board is enough to show that it's there. And since it's something that's pretty far in the distance, like you wouldn't, you, your eye wouldn't see all of the details anyway so i don't think it's like super important to add every detail you know i hope that makes sense um some of my gel pens are starting to run out um and then i'll just go back and i'll add a little bit of snow on top of some of those boards And I guess I should probably do a snowman. Um, Carrie, so, oh, you are doing them with thread. So there's a product that's made by Mod Podge that's called Stiffy, S-T-I-F-F-Y. And I've used it. I made some little um, crocheted stars that are actually crocheted into uh, one of those little metal bracelets, you know, those bangles. 
and it's called stiffy and it works really, really good. Like it dries perfectly clear and there really isn't any like residue on them or anything like that. And if they're only ever going to be used as ornaments, um, it's great. Like it makes them really stiff, but you have to like saturate it. So you would take your, you know, you take your snowflakes and pin them out, um, pin them out how you want to, you know, them to be. And then using a relatively large brush, you really want to get them soaked with that stuff and then just let them dry overnight. It works really good. Yeah, I, I believe it's, I know that is kind of a rude name, but <laughs> yeah, it's called Stiffy. Um, but it works pretty good. So to do the little snowman, I like to use um, like a, um, <laughs> you're welcome, like a, what do they call these? Oh, hi, Carla. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, it's like an embossing tool, basically, is what this is. And it's the same thing I use to do the snow. Anyway, this is one of those, this is a Tim Holtz ideology, um, like rubbing tool, like for rub offs, you know, um, but this end of it is perfect for what I'm talking about. The little ball end. Anyway, so I just dip it in my, um, in my, uh, paint the little head. They have these sets of um, dotting tools that I've seen on Amazon, like if anybody's into doing. So that's how you can get pretty neat little perfectly round parts of your snowman is just using a dotting tool like this instead of using a brush. Just makes it more, I don't know, just a lot easier. Um, Anyway, but those dotting tools look kind of cool. I think I might grab a set of them. Um, they look really neat for um, for doing, uh, what do they call them, mandalas. Or like for rock painting. Have Are any of you guys into rock painting? You ever done rock painting, Car Carla? Um, oh, years ago when I was a kid. Probably painted some rocks when I was a kid. Um. Christy Biddleston does a lot of that stuff. She does all kinds of. Well, it's coming back. Yeah. Yeah. I had the pet rock. <laughs> a pet rock? The pet rocks when I was a kid. I like to use the um, the um, Sakura Jelly Roll glaze gel pens for um, the hats and the buttons and stuff on my snowman because they stay kind of glossy. Like the ink stays a little bit glossy when it dries. And it's somewhat dimensional too. Like it... Um, it, it goes on sort of thick, but it's almost like stained glass kind of the, the glaze pens. I love the, the, um, the ink that they use in these. Anyway, I'm waiting for that, um, gouache to dry. I usually do these like five at a time, you know, so like, I'm, I don't get stuck waiting for something to dry. <laughs> Almost there. Yeah, do it in a. Um... Oh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, like a conveyor line or whatever. Production. Okay. 
other thing too is just you have some little or you like to draw or or if you have a stamp you can do a wreath oh yeah i what thanks for bringing that up I did some little reads that I wanted to show you guys. And just keep going around in sort of different directions. I did take a, um, I took a little ribbon thing that I had handy, just threw a circle and pencil. Okay. And now we'll come back in with a smaller leaf, like a little. Let me wear my other. Wait, what is that? Show me that again. Oh, you're using a stamp. Yeah, so the first stamp I use is this little one right here. <clears throat> and just went around and in one direction and then left a gap and then came back around in the other direction with the stamp. And now I'm doing the little one. I have another, um, this is a stamp. Uh, I can't remember what stamp set this is. Is it like Holly or something? Well, there's a little Holly thing right there. I could use that, but I'm using this little sprig right now. Oh, it's like a little pine tree sprig. Yeah. Oh, okay. I wonder if um, Peg Stamps makes one of those. Let's well, you can look up, look up, you know, leaf stamps or this is a Christmas. This is actually a Christmas stamp because it has two. And, and I'm sorry, y'all. I'm terrible about saying that. And <laughs> oh, so I can't remember where it came from. I'm awful about that. But I'm going to do some of these little leaves in here around. <laughs> His top button came out way bigger than the bottom ones. There we go. As you know, wreath is really not a green green. Well, a wreath is really not perfect. Like, it's not perfectly round. You're going to have some pieces that are sticking out. So, I have these stamps that they go to this, like, set where you can do them in a round shape. It's like some kind of, I don't know what the name of it is, but like it's some kind of tool. And then you use like one of those clear stamps on it and it, and it like makes a round, like, I don't know. It's hard to explain. I don't have the tool. I just have the stamps. And I've used them before and somebody and people have said, oh, those go to this thing. Like, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Are you talking about the stamps that also have a die that come with them so you can cut them out? No, it's like, here, keep going. I'll pull them out and show them to you. Yeah, I don't. I was just thinking that that might be a cool thing to do for reads too. But Dude, I mean, you could do wreath with with anything. And with, yeah. I mean with any kind of little leaf stamp, you can draw, you know, you can draw your little leaves and you know, color them in. Um I mean there's so many different things. I know, I was just thinking that I already have these stamps and that might be something I could use them for. And I'm just no, going to take, I'm just going to do some little like holly. Little, Here they are. Little red berries here and there. 
You inspired me, Carla. That's all I'm saying. Well, awesome. Well, that's what this video is supposed to be all about, right? Yeah. <laughs> is inspiring each other. I hope you guys are inspired. Create some Christmas cards or things. For so it's these little stamps. And I can't remember what they go to. Hold them up a little bit. Because I have you small on my screen, so I can't, I can't see. Oh, they're cool. Yeah, you could definitely make some wreaths out of those. Yeah, that'd be cool. You could use the, the pine one would be really cool. Like this one, you mean? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this one too, I think, because it has little berries too, like juniper berries. Yeah, you could mix those two together. They would be really cool. Or just do just do one or the other or both of them together. Yeah, all of those will work. I'm just trying to think of what's the tool that these go to. There's some kind of system that these came from. Yeah. So, come on, yeah. one of you guys has to know. Yeah. But that's what it was made for, was for making yes, stuff. <laughs> but it was like a tool where you just like, it just like goes around and like, it measures it out for you. Like, anyway, keep whatever. <laughs> oh, there, oh, I don't think I've ever said, I, I understand what you're saying, but I don't think I've ever seen that. You know what I'm saying though? That it's like, like you, like you, you like insert it, put your paper in it and then you put the stamp on and then every time you press it down, it like moves it a little oh. bit. Oh, so you're not talking about one of those things that has the magnets like with the flat thing where you can stamp and then move the stamp again. No, it's not that. It's something different, but it's something like that. Hmm. But it actually like clicks and then moves it like so that it lines them up evenly around. Anyway, I, if I remember what it is, if somebody else knows what the heck I'm talking about, will you let me know? <laughs> I'm sorry, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen yeah, all kinds, of, but I don't think I've ever seen that one. Maybe Carrie, you might be right. Yeah, and that's why I have the stamp. I think I bought those at Tuesday morning. You know, because you know how you get weird stuff at Tuesday morning that, like, yeah, that's you know, that's pro yeah, off price or for a better yeah. price. Yeah, or and like maybe it's just like parts of something and you don't know really what it was to begin with. Anyway. So here's my little guy. The The buttons on the snowman came out way too big and I don't have room to put his scarf on, but usually I'll do just like a little red scarf on him. <laughs> anyway, and then I use the same dotting tool to do my snow on these ones where I didn't do splatter. Well, here's another one that's got the pine leaf on it. I want to keep, I keep, now it's driving me crazy what that thing is called. The tool. I know it's not Stamp Abilities because that's a brand name, but something like that. Like that. I just do little 
we'll snow like that. And then I'll come back and turn some of those snowflakes into those snow dots into snowflakes. And I'll just use a gel pen. Sometimes I'll use a dip pen to do this. Like if I want to use like a metallic ink or something. I'll do it with a dip pen. I always like to do one little like snowflake close to the snowman or in kind of a weird spot, you know. And then on some of them, I've been decorating one of the trees, like a Christmas tree, you know, like I'll just do um, like little dots of metallic paint on one of the trees to make it look like it has ornaments on it or something, you know. Um, I think people in like way back in the day, they used to actually decorate a tree outside for Christmas rather than in the house. Just something I read somewhere, but I could be wrong. Uh, probably some kind of pagan thing, you know? Right. Uh, yeah. So I think it's funny. Well, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of if we used to do outside and not inside. And when you just start talking about that, it makes me think of my friend Curtis's uh, granddaddy who, when they first had, they first came out with indoor plumbing, you know, he was, he was so used to going out to the outhouse. He was like, I have never used the bathroom inside my house and I'm not going to start now. <laughs> yeah. I saw that. It was on like some kind of reality show. <laughs> One of those Alaska shows. <laughs> yeah. His granddaddy said that. He was like, I've never used the bathroom inside my house. Why am I going to start doing that now? No, like, why would you want to poop in your own house? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Laura. Laura's here. Laura's the rubber stamp queen. Hey, Laura. What do these go to? What's the tool that these go to, Laura? Stampendable stamping tool? I don't think so. I don't believe that's what it's called. What is that tool called that these go to? Come on, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Laura's my girl. Yeah, come on, Laura, because we don't know. <laughs> I'm waiting <laughs> impatiently. She's impatiently waiting for <laughs> I know it's something. And then there's all these other stamps that you can get for it that are just like weird shapes, too. Like they're not even represent representative of something like they're just like shapes anyway whatever <laughs> okay i'm gonna do some of these little trees it on really circles in different colors so look so here you go Hold it up more to the camera. <laughs> oh, that is super cute. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, and oh. then I'm gonna I'm gonna put some of this gold stuff on it. How do you swap color shine? had this stuff forever this stuff lasts a long time y'all you don't oh i used to ha i think i still have some of that stuff you just have to shake it up really good to get it going again but look so then when that dries you'll have like the little gold oh is that what those spouters are uh-huh 
That's the color shine. Yeah. But it looks. I wonder, I wonder if I could use these like that. But I guess that's like thicker. This is glimmer mist. I have so many bottles of this stuff, you guys. Yes, I you can use glimmer mist the same way, Jessica. You can? The same way. Um, test it out on something first and see how it dries. But yeah, it's pretty much, this might be a little bit thicker, but it's going to give you sort of that same effect. Because glimmer mist okay. has that in it too. Yeah. I'm going to do that. I'm going to try that. I hardly ever use this stuff anymore. I used to put it on everything. <laughs> when I first yeah, got well, it. That was one of those things that I bought at Tuesday morning. And it was like a pack of like five colors or three colors or something for like $5, you know? So I was like, oh my God. And so I bought like all of it they had. And so now I have like 47 bottles of glimmer. <laughs> bottles of glimmer. You're so <laughs> I have like 47 bottles. <laughs> well, seriously. And then, and then, and then I have like this, the same color duplicated like four, four times. So <laughs> anybody needs some glimmer mist? <sighs> Just saying. This one, that leaf, that, I, that one. Somebody wants you to hold it even closer. Carrie wants you to hold it even closer really close <laughs> okay it's just a bad lag oh yeah can you see that now carrie that is so cute yeah so you used all different kinds of leaves in there yeah yeah huh and this one is a little bit different kind of i like this one too i like the more sort of sporadic look of this one yeah i like those leaves too uh -huh. i need to go find that i need to go find that leaf sorry for the shadow but yeah it's um and i stitched around this one too in some white stitching these were some, these were some I sent last year. Um, and inside it, here's another thing you can do. In, inside it or on the back of it, I, um, well, I think I just stuck the card. So it's this card and machine stitched. You may put it in a five by seven frame if you wish. <laughs> So that's another what little. Is that? It's a, <laughs> it's a little thing I put when I when I sent these cards out. I can't remember. Uh -huh. if I, I think this. I think I did these last year, but um, it says this card was hand stamped and machine stitched. You may put it in a five and by seven frame if you wish. Oh, okay. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So that. I, these I thought, you know, might be pretty just to, you know, set out in a frame for Christmas. And I just stand on, find it on the back. So, um, yeah. So that's a good idea. And you can put some other, like you could just say this card was and, and got some kind of rhyme. I just found that. I found that somewhere. I'm definitely not a poet, so. <laughs> happened to find that and my cards were you know five by seven so and I stitched around them so, yeah so here's an idea if anybody has peg stamps you know I'm gonna totally do that I'm gonna use some of these peg stamps well that'll be fun too let's see what you're gonna do See, on, on these guys, mm -hmm. I'm totally going to do it. <laughs> but I have to figure out what kind of ink I'm going to use. Oh, yeah, on your, little, on your little tag things, yeah. Yeah, because, see, oh, my gosh, this is so full of dust. I hardly ever use those things. Because, see? Oh, 
when I cleaned it out today. It kept giving me a hard time, and I was like, what is wrong with this? <laughs> and I was like, hmm, maybe it needs cleaning. <laughs> you can see, I bought these on Amazon, mm -hmm. but I could have totally made these. Mm-hmm. See what I'm yep. saying? Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Dang it. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> of course, these were a lot faster. but Of course. Yeah. And they're cute. You're still going to use them. Use all them up before you, you know. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm totally going to use those on my jars of canned salmon. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Or you make some. I mean, you could make some different ones, but. So I did all of the layers. I just wanted to show you guys. So I did all the layers. There's probably like four or five different types of pen, you know, some glitter pen, some whatever. But I always end with the opaque um, paint pen. Okay. Just, just because. It gives a nice base for the white snow. Oh, I think this Laura's comment. <laughs> what? Laura's like the the Jeopardy things theme song is played in I my know. head. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Just noticed that. laughs> yeah, she was no help whatsoever. <laughs> it was like dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Oh. So you guys, I'm going to show you this one after I get the snow on it. And you'll see what I was trying to show you on the other one that didn't really come through very well because it was on that rough watercolor paper. But if you kind of just like crisscross back and forth, I think it just makes it look more like like a real tree you know and then you go a little bit heavy on the outside like on the edge of the branches you know anyway that's that okay now i'm going to do a bunch of different colors and then i wanted to also show you guys another idea in case any of you guys have watercolor markers like what like brush pens um i bought that big set of the um those poetic watercolor brush pens these were super cheap on amazon i think it was like 99 pens for like 40 dollars or something and yeah, there's like all the colors, you know. Um, I have two different sets of watercolor brush pens in here, but this is a different set that I bought on jet pens. But but watercolor brush pens or watercolor markers are really fun to use um, as watercolors. Like they're not just pens. Like um, let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'll do one. So this is um this is cold press watercolor paper. This is hot press watercolor paper. So it's just smoother. This one's got a little bit of texture to it. So here's what I started doing with um let me pull out some greens do some trees oh my god i need to separate these out or something there's too many colors in here <laughs> i just dumped them in this thing but i feel like i need to put them in something a little bit more This kind of thing drives me crazy. I like to have my markers and pens and stuff like in slots, you know, 
so they stay where they're supposed to be anyway so i start off with like one of the darker colors let's just do a bigger one like kind of a big one so make the line of the tree and then <clears throat> and you can see the texture of the paper is like the pen is kind of like skipping a little bit but that's fine it doesn't matter because we're going to wet it anyways so on the smooth paper obviously it's better it's different not better different so go with a dark color and then a little bit lighter color have to go a little slower i guess on the rough paper but what's fun about i think what's cool about watercolor pens or markers is that they are basically just like watercolors but the colors are already mixed up for you and they're in a handy dandy little pen right? so then i'm using like a really light green kind of like a lime green have you ever used the watercolor pencils uh-huh yeah i love watercolor pencils i like them too yeah yes ma'am i'm just gonna add a little bit more color into this one okay and then take a water brush is usually the best thing some kind of a water actually i'm gonna use a thicker one Where's my other water brushes? Well, this one will work. Um, make sure it's kind of like juicy. Like you've got a little bit of water, like, like it's primed basically. You want like, you want the tip to be pretty wet. And then just gently go over the whole thing. come back a little bit if you need to but basically just want to wet the whole thing and then set it aside i know i've got that the center part of this tree a little trunk i'm going to try to rub it out a little bit i don't know why i always do that line i just do anyway just let it dry. Just set it aside and let it dry somewhere. Oops. I squeezed it in the water. Kind of dripped on there. Hi, Laura. <clears throat> I just wanted you guys basically to see how the colors kind of blend together. And when it dries, like if you just set it aside and don't look at it until it's dry, it looks really cool. Like, yeah, it'll look completely different when it dries, it'll be lighter. Yeah, it'll be lighter and like the colors actually do kind of blend shift around and blend together. Yeah. Um, and I did a bunch just on little like gift tags like that. You know? And now I'm going to come back into these. These are just like to put on presents, you know. I'll, I'll probably, probably cut, cut off the corners on a lot of these. 
That's what I was thinking about for these little trees that I did. I really like this one. Was just maybe making tags out of them. Yeah. And I mean, I could come back in. Actually, see like this one. See how it really got super wet and washy looking. I just think it looks cool. So anyway, little watercolor. Yeah. Uh, There's cold trees. Oh. Those pens aren't as intense as this other set that I have. These ones, these Zig Fudabiori ones that I have are much more intense color. Um, and I think that they're a lot better than these Poetic ones. But for like $40, maybe $50 to get like a hundred colors. I think that's a pretty good deal. Uh, yeah. That's deal on those too. Yeah. Right up there with your, um, alcohol markers, but these ones, these food Biori ones, I don't know how to say it. It's they're yeah. Japanese. They're way more intense. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Night Carrie. Thanks for joining us. Hello to anybody that I missed when we first started. I was letting Jessica say hello to everybody. I wasn't trying to, I was trying not to talk over her. <laughs> so oh, well, I just don't shut up. That's the problem. No, that's good because I'm not good at, you're good at talking while you're doing stuff. I'm not. <laughs> so far, fine. Talk away. <laughs> um, you don't bother me at all, Jessica. That's why we work pretty good together. <laughs> Um, I mean, seriously, I, when I'm doing something like my, my brain these days, just doesn't like, I've kind of stopped at this point and I'm watching you now. So now I'm looking at that. <laughs> um, I'm not good at multitasking anymore. Well, you do good when you're doing videos. Yeah, I, I'm okay when I'm, yeah. I'm focused on a journal flip through or something, but when I'm, yeah, I, I'm okay. When you're talking about when you're talking about what you're doing, it's different, huh? Yeah, it's a little thing for me. And then always like my words, like I, I lose my words. It's like words when I'm doing. I think everybody does that when they make videos, especially. Like I know I do it all the time and forget what words are. Like one time I forgot what a paper clip was. It's like, what am I trying to say? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um but yeah, see how those food food of Biori ones, they come out a little bit richer color. Um but but the other ones aren't bad. See, this is after I mean they sat for like two or three minutes. And they start looking like, like actual watercolor. You know what I mean? And I didn't do anything. Like I just scribbled some color on there and then went over it with water. And then it just blends together and makes these really pretty, um, you know, watermarks and stuff. So. Yeah, they're pretty. But this is what this stuff looks like when it dries, Jessica. I don't know if you can tell the difference. Well, let me see. I love the colors on that. It's so cute. Yeah. The, um, oh, the mittens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you see the shift it a little? Like wiggle it around and it's sparkly. Oh yeah. Yeah. You can see it. It, um, uh -huh. yeah, it's really, I don't think the camera really does it justice, but like, and then I went back in on this one and I put a lot of white lines on this one to kind of tone it down. It was super dark and I didn't get as big a splatter on this. So you can see the little splatters. Yeah. It's really, it's really cute. It's really pretty. Mm, thank you. I like your, I like your patterns. Like you, you can, I have a hard time like coming up with, patterns and designs to put on things well i used i cheated i got this from a um 
from a dish towel. <laughs> yeah, but see, that's what I was saying about the coloring books. Like, yeah, that's why I, you know, I like to look at other things yeah. just to get ideas about patterns and stuff. But like, he's but I use different colors because I'm trying to play with these markers. And then I did do some actual blending. It probably doesn't show up that well. No, it does. Yeah, they look like they're painted. Yeah. So oh. I, this one I didn't do as much blending on, but that one I did. This one I did a little more blending with colors in it. Um, What's in that white bottle right there in front of you? This? Yeah. Gesso. What is it? Oh, gesso. Gesso, yeah. We were painting. Um, do you want to see? grandkids what we did <laughs> wait what uh, so me and me oakland and peyton did some salt dough ornaments oh those are fun those in members shrinky dinks yep so i'll just show you a sample <laughs> i still got i still got to put a clear coat on these but if anybody's interested, these these are really fun to do. See if I can come in here without messing. These aren't quite completely dry. Those are salt dough. Yep. So isn't it, isn't it like two parts salt, one part water, one part flour, or something? So um, it's two cup for one, like for one batch. It's two cups of flour, half a cup of salt, and about a cup of, I use warm water, warm water, but I don't oh. think that matters, but, and then I just put, I'll just put a little bit of oil on my hands when I'm mixing, well, I take a fork and mix it, and then when I get it into pieces, then I just take a, put a little bit of oil on my hands, and, you know, mush it all in a ball, and then you roll it out. And you're supposed to roll it out to about um, a quarter of an inch. So they they really work how thin this is. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's really thin. I've so, never seen salt dough that thin before. So these work, these work pretty good. Well, you can do them a little bit thicker than that, but they actually work better if they're a little bit thinner. Um, some of them thicker you can see I'm just saying the ones that we made when i was a kid they were yeah. like they were like that thick <laughs> if you get them too thick they, they bubble and they pop that's it judy inka dinka do stamping gear oh she figured it out yes Yay. that is exactly what it is okay <laughs> you Dude. rock judy okay sorry no it's fine it's fine <laughs> <laughs> but what I, what I really wanted to do with them, and you can see this one is thicker, but these these are handprints. So this is Oakland's handprint. Oh, okay. Oh, look at it. It's a Santa. Yeah. So I painted it like a Santa. Now this, I got this idea from Pinterest. So this is not my idea. And then this is Owen's little handprint. Oh my God, that's so cute. So And then I just put that on the back. So I've got to seal them before I hang them on the tree. Um. Yeah, but then Peyton painted these. Peyton, Peyton, Peyton painted these. Oakland took all hers home with her. So, um, Peyton they left the front and the back. I see. Um, on some of the well, I told her she didn't have to, but she did because I I did that. I did this pink one. This one was kind of wonky because it it did this number. <laughs> it got over to the side of the pan. Um, and and she was what like, did you do? So you colored them with what? I I colored these with um with my paints. I use the oh, same. Oh, you did paint. Yeah, we okay. use on these. I use the same paints that I use on my covers and stuff like these um. So you don't bake them, huh? You don't bake them then, do you? No. Yeah, well, I baked them first. So you. You spread your dough out, and then we use cookie cutters. We use cookie cutters for all these except, you know, the handprints. I had them do their handprints, and I just took a knife and cut them out. Okay. Um, 
but no, use cookie cutters for these, and then you bake them at like 225 for two hours. Oh, and the, okay. So they and, get like super dried out, but not brown. Right. So they come out, you know, like this. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I've already sealed. I've already sealed this one. I just sealed them with some Mod Podge. I really, I've got some clear coat back there, though. I think I'm going to end up, I think I'm going to spray these two, though, because I want them to hold up for quite some time. I bet but, that, um, that Krylon triple thick spray that I use would work good on those. Think so? Yeah. I oh, said it's awesome. Yeah. I want these to hold up for a while. And I actually had Peyton. I've got Peyton's handprint over there, which is like <laughs> almost as big as mine because she's 12 now. She's got big hands. But um, I had her do one too. And then I'm going to, sometime before the holiday, I'm going to get Sophia and Anne Marie. I thought these were so cute though. So we did two. Brittany and Kelly took one for Oakland and one for Owen home. So, but we had, the kids had fun doing this. Um, Oakland had a good time doing that. Pretty sure Sophia's not going to do this just yet. She's getting ready to turn three, so she's not quite ready. But <clears throat> if I can get her handprints, her and Anne-Marie's handprints. Those two little uh -huh. This is something fun to do, you guys. And you can, like, you can really make these, um, you can just do, like, a circle, you know, like, make them, like, a circle and you that and inks and things like that use kind of some of the same principles that we used you know for cards and stuff and um make them look you know not so childlike you know you can make them a little more sophisticated um, go on pinterest and look there's some really cool ideas and it's so it's cheap it's easy i mean the longest time the longest thing is you know the baking time it just takes a long day but super fun Especially if you got kids. So. Oh, Carrie's le Carrie left. I didn't even say goodbye to her. Bye, Carrie. Thanks for hanging oh. out with us. <laughs> that was that was fun. Um, I Her put job. a link to that stamping gear circle thing in the chat, you guys, just in case anybody is wondering. Um, because I'm gonna get one because I think that's really cool. <laughs> I, and everybody told me about those stamps that they they went to that thing before, but I could never like picture it in my head. So now if you look at that link, you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna have to look at that. And it comes with an oval too. So, so when you got it, you just got the stamps? Yeah, I just bought the stamps and I'm pretty sure I bought them at... Tuesday morning, which is why they didn't have the tool that they went to, you know, right. but, um, and I never even thought about it. And then somebody said, Oh, those go to that Inca Dinka do thing. And I was like, I was like, Oh, well, I don't have that. So I'm just using them like stamps, you know, but, <clears throat> but I really like that thing. It's kind of cool. Anyway, anywho, So yeah, I just wanted to show, I just wanted to share these little ideas with you guys and kind of craft along with Carla and hang out with her. I haven't seen her for a long time and well, since we did that live sale. Mm -hmm. And then as far as attaching these to cardstock, so when you get watercolor paper, obviously, oh, here's the little barn. See my little barn? <laughs> I just thought it turned out so cute. Really are cute. And I don't know if it even looks like a barn. And I wasn't sure what to do with the door. Oh. But I don't know if you can see, but it has a little weather vane on the top. That is so cute. And those aren't chickens. That's actually supposed to be like dead grass that's just kind of gotten snowed on. <laughs> those aren't chickens. You're too funny. Well, I'm just saying they kind of might look like they were supposed to be chickens, but they're not. No. It looks like, no, it looks like grass or gravel or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was one of my earlier ones, so you can see that I didn't really see these look more like real trees, I think. You know, I think like they get a little bit more, mm -hmm. more different, you know. But and then this one, 
Where's my church? Did I show you my church? Oh, oh, no. Let me see if I can find the church. Hold the phone. Where's my church? I can't find it. How many cards have you made? Like 100? Huh? <clears throat> oh, here's the church. Oh, yeah, this one was the church. How many cards have you made already? You've made a bunch. Yeah, I don't know. A lot. Well, they're so, I love them. I love the long one. That, that little church, that's cute. I've made this many that are mounted and with envelopes and stuff. So I think I'm going to do some sets on Etsy though. And I think what I'll do are like some cards, some just like flat cards. I don't know if I'll do folded cards. Um, and then, and then maybe do a bunch of the circles, you know, for labels for folks. Yeah. And then, and then do some little gift tags too, and just do some little sets. Wouldn't that be yeah. cute? Yes. I would, like I would like that. Yeah. I would buy that. Just saying. Yeah. I like. I like all of it. The little tag. So what are you going to do with all your cards? Are you just going to give them to your friends and family? Or? Uh, so depending on how many I make, yeah, friends and family. And then um, I'll probably, like, I'm working on some Christmas journals very slowly. I have, oh my God, I've just been, I feel like I've just been running behind all year on my projects I wanted to get done. Um, I've got journals that are already spoken for and then i've got four more well four i got three little golden books one of the craft text journals and then two minis so i'll probably put either some of the tags or the card you know card in each one of those you know they'll go in my journals and stuff um right on depending on how many i make but yeah friends and family co-workers in my office Right on. Yeah. yeah, you'll use some of yours in journals, though, too, huh? Yeah, see, I never do Christmas journals or anything. Um, well, if I don't get the crack of lacking, they're not going to be done this year. <laughs> yeah, right? I know. I know. It's crazy. It's almost December already. Yeah, I mean, I just, and I thought, originally, um, I didn't think the kids were all coming here for Thanksgiving, so... My original plan was to get them finished up this weekend, but then they came, Kelly and Brittany and um, Oakland and Owen came Wednesday, and so they didn't leave till Saturday, <clears throat> and Tyler and the girls were over here, and uh, so when they left Saturday morning, I won't even tell you what this place looked like. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, Crazy, it really, huh? it that bad, you know, I just picked up and then, you know, I, I had to sweep and mop my floors, you know, because toddlers, you know. Yeah, toddlers. Food and crumbs everywhere, you know, that they, they just, you know, they leave their tracks. So, I spent a good part of the morning cleaning and then <laughs> I laid down on the couch and fell asleep. <laughs> After I did cleaning and I was like, okay, well, I'm done for today then, you know. Um, I didn't intend to fall asleep. I intended to rest for a little bit. And, yeah. Anyway, I did work on some stuff last night and this morning. Um, yeah, but I, I did get to work on the Christmas journals this morning. So, and I already had all this stuff out, so that was really easy to do because we were doing stuff. Yeah, um, I've been working on these for, God, probably about a week. But I found my wreaths. I wanted to show you really quick. Okay. Um, I have one at this point. So I just did these with um, with the markers, you know, and just layered them. Yeah. So there's oh, a yeah. I hear you, Malia. I feel you. She says she's running behind too. Oh yeah. Hold it up a little. Bit I swear, I, I've got my. I still can't see. 
Oh, I like the way you did. So I like the way you did the color in the background and then the white on the top. Yeah, see, that's what I was trying to get across with the trees, too. It's like, yeah, you know, just layer different colors. That's cool on the craft. Yeah. I know. I love it on craft paper. Yeah. It's not my favorite. Believe that. I am out of craft card stock. I'm never been out of craft card stock. I went to, um, I went to my worst favorite craft store, Joanne's, yesterday. Because I I needed white um embossing some. powder. Yeah. Like just plain old white embossing powder. And I didn't want to drive all the way to Michaels. Michaels right. is like Michaels is probably six miles from my house and Joanne's is like 10 blocks away, you know? And <clears throat> so that means if I go to Michaels, then I have to go to Hobby Lobby too, you know. And <laughs> So I was scared to go to hop because they're right next door to each other oh, it is. in Spokane. So, <laughs> yeah. So I can't go to Michael's and not go to Hobby Lobby, you know, <laughs> and, anyway. Um, but I didn't feel like driving all the way up there. And do you know, Joanne's, Joanne's doesn't have anything. Really? It's like, they don't have anything that I want anymore. <clears throat> they didn't have any white embossing powder all they had was like like holographic glittery white you know and i was just thinking why don't you guys like they need somebody to work on their stock you know my, and, my here needs that too they they don't they don't stock the same kind of stuff they used to yeah i mean that seems like to me that seems like one of the most basic mm -hmm things i mean if you're gonna have stamps and you're gonna have rubber stamps and you're gonna have stamp pads and this huge selection of all that stuff why don't you have embossing powders you know yeah I mean, anyway sorry yeah oh it's fine candy i don't mind doing a quick sneak peek if jessica doesn't mind staying on a few more minutes no uh, keep, go ahead go uh, ahead get my I'm going to do one of these little wreaths on one of these stickers and see how it turns out. Let's do, let's do a blue one. When I make these little reads, I do like to do like a pencil line around just kind of where I start at. So anyway. This one needs some more glue. So um, here's one of the little golden books real quick. Oh. Yeah. It's called My Christmas Book. And uh, I did not like the covers. These are, these are super old. Um, and um, I picked them up off of eBay. And... Um, the backs i covered them with paper because it, the backs i didn't like them you know the ones that have the the book covers on the back you know what i mean it's not what like, do you mean so like the some of the backs have the actual like little pictures of the different golden books on the back oh yeah so um here's jingle bells Um, and they haven't been, they haven't been bound yet. And then here's the night before Christmas. I love this fabric. 
um, I love this fabric. And then um, those other two fabrics that I got, I picked them up from Katie at, um, oh, Katie's Travel 5. I've, I've got some uh -huh. really cute Christmas fabrics from her. So that's that one. Um, see how this, I like this back. Some of the back, they're black. They have different looks on them. I just, I'm just not sure. So, anyway, that's that one that's in progress. And this is the one, um, Craft Text one that will go in the shop. So, this charm will be on the side. And then this is the image on the front. That's a little golden book? No, this oh. is. This is one of the craft text covers. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, I wasn't. I should have been listening. Sorry. You're fine. You were trying to show them how you're doing that. I'm. No, I'm just doing it, but I wasn't listening. Just. <laughs> <laughs> it is okay. So, I love this little image with uh, the angels and little baby Jesus and the lamb. This came out of a. Uh, um, this did. The image did come out of a little golden book. And then it's got the tie. It hasn't been um, found and everything yet. So that's that one. So that's four of them. And then I've got two minis. So. I have, I need to send this box to you. Well, there's box? some Christmas stuff in there. Oh, girl, it's fine. Um, I have plenty of stuff right now. And when you send it, I'll use it for... I use it for my journals and journals next year. No rush. I got stuff I need to send you too. And I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm just slow going on everything. It seems like. Oh, I think I'm gonna do a book sale. And I think I might do it. Uh... I, I want to say I'm going to do it as a live. <sighs> but sometimes that's frustrating. So what do you think? What do you, what does anybody else think? Should I do it? I'm trying to move my studio space into um, what used to be Sammy's room and Sebastian's room. So that I can kind of have my living room back and like have a living room, you know, like with a couch and a coffee table and stuff <laughs> and like maybe even have a dining room table again um, and just move all of my crafty art studio stuff into they're like it's like two rooms that are kind of connected to each other. And um, so I'd just like to move all of this stuff that's in here into those two rooms. And to do that, I want to get rid of a bunch of stuff. And a lot of that is books. Um, well, Malia, that's what I've done in the past. I used to always do my book sales that way. And I think maybe I'll do that again. I used to just, you know, put the lot numbers in the comment on the video. And then as people email me, I delete the lot number from the, the comment or the description on the video. So I don't really like doing auctions. I just kind of like, like to come up with a price that I want for it. And then that's the price, you know? So yeah, I mean, I used to do that pretty regularly, like at least like once every six weeks or so. Cause I used to have a really good connection for books but I don't really have that connection anymore. So, um, but I have a lot of books that I've had for a long time and I just don't think I'm ever going to use them for journals. And I don't know, they're just taking up a lot of space. So, so I might do that. I might even do a lot of those, um, the, what are those magazines, the ideals books? Mm -hmm. Cause I said I was going to put, yeah, I like flat pricing better too. And then just media mail shipping, you know. Um, anyway, so. So, yeah, I think I'm going to do a book sale here in the next couple weeks. 
I was thinking maybe next weekend I would do it. But you guys think doing videos is better? I need some feedback here. I'd be easier on you just doing the videos. Yeah, I used to do that, and then I would just delete the videos when all the video, all the books sold. You know, just delete yeah. the video. So and easier on you that way. Yeah, because doing live sale, it's like, you know, it depends on how many people are there, I and then you know they have the people that are actually there have to want what you have, and then if they don't, you feel like nobody wants any of it you know what i mean <laughs> so it's like i don't know yeah they're I mean, hit sometimes sometimes they're great and sometimes you know just pe if people are just feel like they're shopped out yeah you know and yeah i think i'm gonna put all my digitals in my etsy shop at like half price here pretty soon just for kind of a holiday thing in case anybody's interested in looking at what I have for digitals and on Etsy, but, um, yeah. And then I have some other ideas for some mini journals. I haven't done minis for a long time now. Remember I used to do minis every month. Yeah, girl. That's a lot. <clears throat> I so, Do you all the time how much you get done? I mean, like, just, yeah. And I meant to tell you, oh, those last journals you did, like the ones with the and the little, um, the little, those were awesome. What the bag? Oh, with the bags, uh, and the, and the little pouch you made. I need to. <clears throat> yeah, I made thirty-four zipper pouches for those. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I just I don't know if people realize just how much like how much work that is like even even to sew the bags to cut the even though they're fairly simple bags to cut the fabric to stitch the fabric to to yeah. um and then to do those zipper pouches i mean that you know they're simple but they still take a lot of time yeah well i figured like i spent one day making the zipper bags i spent one day doing the drawstring bags you know, it just kind of goes like that. So you, yeah, it would have taken me. It, it it takes me a little bit longer. So this is kind of fun. I'm just going around like using different colors, just layering these up, making these little super simple little pine needle like frond shapes. Doing some on the inside, some on the outside. And I think that they layer up really cute. Just different. Yeah, I like those. You know, and then I'll go back over it, um, over the top with the more opaque paint pen. Like pretty much all the other colors that I use are more transparent. Right. And then if you use this opaque one on the top, it gives it more dimension. And then, and then I'll go back over this again and do white and that makes it look kind of snowy, but the white gel pen kind of picks up a little bit of the paint. And so, it kind of makes the snow look, it takes on a little bit of the color from the opaque uh, paint pen, if that makes sense. It It's almost like it um, like dilutes it or something. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I'll show you what I mean. So when you go back over with the gel pen, It kind of picks up that color a little bit. It helps if it's all dry. Thank you, Candy. I'm just now looking at chat again. Is Candy leaving? 
No, no, no. She was just, um, she made a comment about the journal. So I was just saying thank you. Sorry oh. for the date there. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't, you know, I don't shop at Joann's. I don't, I don't have one near me. Um, and I don't have a Hobby Lobby. Well, you're not missing anything. Close to me either. But I have a Michaels that's literally like two minutes away from me. And I don't go in there very often anymore because A, their prices have gone up. And B, they don't really ever have, they do have card stock. So I used to buy my card stock there because they would sell like, um, they would do like two or three packs of cardstock, like the eight and a half by 11 for like, yeah, for like 10 bucks, right? No, they would do two for five. Oh. Now, now they're two for 10. Oh, see, that's uh, not cool. No. Um, yeah. So they've gone up on their prices, but I mean, it's like everybody else. You know, that's why I didn't buy cardstock. I didn't buy, I bought bread. Um, the last time I was in there, because that's what I needed. That's really pretty. I like that blue. You oh. bought bread at Michael's? No, red cards, red card stock. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, that's my, it's my accent. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> you said something earlier, and I was going to say, I was going to tell everybody what it was you really said. <laughs> I'm terrible Ooh. for my enunciation sometimes. <laughs> when I talk fast, it comes out. Yeah. <laughs> just, just a big old redneck. <laughs> so, anyway. You only go to Michael's when it, yeah. You know what? I got pissed off at Michael's too. Excuse my language. I got pissed off at Michael's too because it's like, um, I don't know. Sometimes their coupon thing is so misleading. It's like so right. annoying, you know, like you go in there and, and you think you have like this coupon that you can use for to get a really super great deal. But then you get up to the check stand after you waited in line for 15 minutes and then you get up there and you try to use your coupon and they go, oh, that's not valid on those. Yeah. It's like, what? Yeah. You know, anyway. Yeah. I've too. However, the last time I was in there, there wasn't much of a line. There weren't many people in the store at all. And um, I can kind of understand why, because their prices are not, their prices are not what they used to be. And, you know, people, people really, I'm telling you, are shopping online. Like, yeah. I, buy, I buy a lot of stuff from Amazon and I buy a lot of, I shopped this year. I bought a lot of things from live sales. Um and oh, then, so that's what I was going to do, actually, when I couldn't find the white embossing powder at Joann's, which I knew they weren't going to have it anyway, but I just thought, well, I'll just go in and see. And I wound up spending $70 on stupid, you know, cards right. in there uh, anyway. <laughs> and, and anyway, so I got back home and I thought, oh, I wonder if I could just do... Like, like I thought, okay, well, I'll pay the $7.99 delivery fee if I can get um, Michael's to deliver the white embossing powder. And I'm pretty sure they have some other crap that I don't need that I could add to the order <laughs> to make it worth it, you know. And so I went online when I got back in the house and looked at their website to put in a, an online order. And of course, the white embossing powder that I know they have in the store isn't available for delivery. Well, that I'm makes sense. super mad. <laughs> it's like if you're going to have half of your stock available for delivery, why not make all of it available? Anyway, I don't know. So I wanted to show you guys one more product and I'm not affiliated with any of these things that I'm showing you guys. I'm just showing you because I think it's cool. Um, this ink is so amazing. Yeah, um, yeah. Julie's complaining about Michael's too. They don't carry. Yeah. They used to carry a lot of Tim Holtz and they don't anymore. I'm sorry, Jessica. I won't interrupt yeah, you. no, I totally, I don't know. I've started buying a lot of stuff from, art supply stores because yeah. they just have what you want, you know? I mean, 
if you need card stock, I say, yeah, Joanne's, Michael's, Hobby yeah. Lobby, whatever. They, uh -huh. they have good stuff for that, you know, but they're really going to have to step up their game because yeah. yeah. So anyway, but you know what? Visit Dick Blick, visit, uh, Jerry's art arama visit um Jackson's art supplies you know like some of those even Etsy for art supplies like yeah you know anyway uh jet pens in case anybody doesn't know I'm like addicted to jet pens I love jet pens they I just everything I love them anyway they have this ink I was looking for metallic inks <clears throat> and I wound up buying the um the ph martins the ph martins iridescent inks they have two sets um so of course i had to buy both sets but um but they're really cool um like metallic uh ink i haven't bought those yet but i've seen those yeah mm -hmm. yeah they're amazing um they're great for calligraphy i'm gonna start trying to do some calligraphy i decided i'm gonna start trying to teach myself calligraphy but Anyway, so I was on Jet Pens, and this brand keeps coming up as metallic ink. So I bought one bottle because it wasn't cheap. It was like, I think, $28. But I just couldn't take it out of my cart because it looked so amazing. <laughs> and it truly is. It's it's called, um, it's, the brand is Dominant Industry. And <clears throat> this ink is literally like can you see the you guys can't see the sparkle can you see how metallic that is i mean it is literally like chrome oh yeah yeah it, uh, you know, you're paying for you're paying for that quality and yeah I'm and i'm just using it in like really small amounts <laughs> because i'm kind of like yeah hoarding it a little bit but i need to use it it's so amazing like this is this is just another like metallic ink on this one and it's not anywhere near well this is kind of a bad example but anyway yeah. see in the bottle see that yeah anyway so now they have two other colors that I have to get. They have a holograph one yeah. and then they have a champagne gold. I love uh, it. That yeah. <laughs> anyway, I need more metallic and sparkly paint. <laughs> in my head. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, you guys. I love you. I love, I love you, guys. Carla. Love you too, Jessica. Um, there's my race all finished. So it takes a while to just make one of these, I noticed. Like, you know. Yeah. Hey, have you tried um printing? I know that's not the same, but I was thinking about your mittens. Mm -hmm. Have you tried printing um printing them? But like scanning them and printing them? Yeah. Um, no, because I don't have a scanner printer here. Oh, you have one at work, huh? That you but use. I'm not supposed to. Oh, yeah. And I'm just telling the whole world all about it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, a few things I can do there, but I'm not supposed to do a lot of stuff. But anyway, um, no, that's on my, that's on my to-do list. Uh, before I get that, I'm going to get a webcam. So yeah, I'm going Carla to needs a webcam. You guys just I'm saying going to buy myself a webcam. I'm going to start a GoFundMe for Carla's webcam. <laughs> They're only 20 bucks. I got you <laughs> no, a pretty, a decent <laughs> webcam is about $70, 70, between 70 and a hundred dollars. Oh. I mean, to get, to get one that isn't going to like malfunction. Yeah. No, I'm going to get one. Yeah. You know, that that's like high definition and that kind of stuff. I think the one I have, I think it was about $75, something like that, but I've had it for 
probably three years. So you need to just go on Amazon and pick one out that I need. Okay. Night, Jude. Night, Jude. Good night, you guys. Love you. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, and you yeah. go. Wait. <laughs> I try to, I used to buy a lot of that kind of stuff from thrift stores too, but you know what I noticed is that I was buying things from thrift stores that I didn't use. Like I was buying stuff from thrift stores and estate sales because it was there and it was cheap and it was like, oh my God, this is cool. Like I need that. And then I was only buying it because it was there, but I never used it. Like I bought a whole, okay, here's one of the things that I bought from a, a thrift store that I never used. And I'll tell you, it was such a great deal. Somebody was a Stampin' Up! Um, demonstrator and they had all of these wheels. I still have them. They're all in a big giant bin. And, and so it was like all of these handles, you know, and then you get the little ink cartridges that go in here. And <clears throat> so, I bought them. I bought all that there was there and I've used them like once, <laughs> you know, yeah. so I just, yesterday I remembered that I had these and I was like, Oh, I wonder if there's any Christmas ones. And so there was, you know, so I'm going to try to use them just, just to use them. But do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's why I stopped like actually buying. Yeah. If you sell what you don't use for sure, that's probably what I should do. But anyways, so yeah, Damn. I have a bunch of, um, I just have a, I, I have a bunch of stamps and I don't use, I just don't use them enough, but I'm not, I like, I'm not ready to part with them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's how I feel about my Christmas stamps. And I'm trying to like my Christmas stamps, I'm using more and more. Um, but some of my other stamps, I really need to start getting out and using in my own, you know, my own journaling and stuff. Um, and I'm trying, I'm trying to do better about it because I do have some, I have some Ali Edwards stamps. I did that like one of her month, monthly kits for a while. Oh, like a subscription. Yeah. Like her, um, like $20 kit that came with like a stamp and like, you know, project life cards and some little embellishments. Well, I didn't do big kits, but it came with a nice stamp set every month, which is, which is great for storytelling because it's different types of stories, you know? Yeah. So, and then I had the, did the Felicity Jane for a while. So I have a bunch of her steps and then I just have random, I have some random ones um, and stuff for baby journals and things like that. But I forget about them a lot of times. I, I just don't like them out for, um, are you, Using I know like, that's what happens with all my like I have a whole bunch of just like beautiful uh like art stamps you know like stamps that um you know would be really beautiful to like color in and stuff like that but I never use them for anything yeah like because I bought them at thrift stores yeah you, know, you can believe they were only four dollars or whatever but yeah. now yeah. I have bought some at thrift stores and some at live sales that I know I'll use eventually for certain projects. But yeah, Malia said she took her two days to go to her, through her punches. I'm telling you now, I'm stingy when it comes to a punch. I will, yeah. I will buy a punch that I know I am over, over, like star punches, circle punches. Um, I have a couple of border punches, a couple of punches tag you know and taps like I, don't, I, I will not spend I don't know I'm, I'm stingy on some things like I spend money on something else crazy you know like tons of fabric and <laughs> stuff like that but yeah bunches, yeah I just um they're they are pricey now if I if I was I to, know if I was to come across, I've never been lucky enough to come across a bunch of them at a, at a yard sale or a thrift store or anything like that. If I came across a whole bin of them, I'm sure I'd buy them. But for yeah. like $15, $20, you know, for, um, I don't know, I'm stingy. I'm just stingy about it. Cause I know, I know what I'm going to use there. You know what I mean? Like at this yeah. point, I, I know I'm not going to use certain ones like, you know, 
But, well, that was like how I, I like I bought those um that tab punch board. And, yeah. And the, um what was the other one? The window punch board. Yeah. Like I know I know they've been out for a long time, but I just uh -huh. never bought them because I didn't think I would really use them, you know, and then and then I finally bought them and it's like, okay, I'm going to use these. I'm determined to use them. Otherwise I'm going to feel stupid, you know? Yeah. But, but you did have some cool projects with those. Have, yeah, I feel like I'll use them again too, yeah. you know? Like I don't have patient. I don't know about you guys, but. <coughs> I don't have the patience to do tedious measuring. You know what I mean? <laughs> <coughs> Weirdo. Anyway. Yeah. I try not to either. I try to just, if I can't tear it like fabric, I have a hard time with it. So yeah. like all of that cantha fabric, I had to actually cut. It was like, yeah. It takes longer. It takes a lot longer. I think I'm going to make a big like um, patchwork quilt out of those, some of those, oh, that'd and, be cool. you know, cut them up into squares and then sew them all back together. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Definitely. I thought they might be kind of cool to do them like as chenille, you know, like how you sew like seams next to each other and then you cut in between them. Yeah. And then you, like fray, you know? Yeah. Okay, guys. I love you. Yeah. Here we go. We're just we're just rambling on now. Okay. I will uh see you guys sooner than later. And Carla, I will talk to you yep. soon. Okay. Look, enjoyed it. I love Night -night. you. It was fun hanging out. Okay. Ending stream now. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs>